Um, as Ed said, my name is June Black, and I'm the Associate Curator for Academic Programs here at the museum. Um, actually, before I get started on this, I have one little housekeeping thing. Oh, can you hear me in the back? No? Is this mic, is Zach back there? Is the mic on? Is this better? Oh, there we go. Hold it. Okay, so just a quick housekeeping issue. We had a chamber um, concert scheduled for Saturday at noon, and that's been, or excuse me, Friday at noon. That's been canceled, so don't show up here for the concert. We'd love to have you on Friday at noon just to look at the exhibitions, though. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about this really exciting exhibition project that we're discussing this evening. Um, one of the most exciting aspects of my job is getting to work with faculty members on how to incorporate original objects into their teaching. Um, not, not images, but actual objects. Um, so we're looking at images here, but I hope if you haven't had a chance to go see the exhibition upstairs that you'll um, go check out the actual photographs themselves. Um, one of the most successful ways that we've been able to incorporate this type of teaching in the museum is through our academic support grant program. Um, so we receive funding from the deans of the College of Arts and Sciences, um, Architecture and Allied Arts, and the Honors College, and then the Office of the Provost uh, really generously matches those funds. And um, this project is in its third year currently. So since 2011, uh, we've been able to award almost $100,000 um, to 34 different faculty members who worked on 28 projects. Um, so it's been a really great collaboration. Um, I'm a Latin Americanist myself, so when Ed and Lainey and Alayi brought this project to us this year, I was particularly excited about the content. Um, but also I was really excited about this project because I, I felt it struck a chord with what this museum is about. Um, we were founded as a museum um, with the goal of increasing cross-cultural understanding through art. Our founder really believed that art was the way uh, to make people understand one another a little bit better. Um, so I feel like this project really, really does that. Um, I'd just like to point out too that um, the exhibition actually only opened yesterday, but I've already led about 50 students through as part of a class, and I see a lot of you are here again tonight, so thank you for coming. Um, so it seems like the material has really struck a chord on campus as well. Um, so I am very, very thankful to Alayi and Lainey and Ed for bringing this project to our attention and sharing with us. Um, and with that, I will introduce Professor Alayi Reyes Santos. Please ring me up. Buenas tardes. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's really nice to see you here. De verdad que es un placer verlos a todos aquí, a todas. Eh, básicamente, este es un proyecto que nació de una conversación entre Lainey y Ed. <laughs> Allí, uh, como creando proyectos. This is a project that was born out of a conversation that Lainey and, and Ed and I had um, last year, around April or May. Y finalmente, yo conocí a las personas de reconocido de movimiento en República Dominicana, Eh, hace dos años y queríamos colaborar con el movimiento. Entonces se nos ocurrió que una exhibición de fotos tal vez sería un buen proyecto, fue algo que organizamos con el movimiento también allá, transnacionalmente, de muchas maneras, <ríe> por correo electrónico, por correo físico, por, de muchas maneras, <ríe> telefónicamente. So this is a project that really came out of the collaboration with the movement reconocido of Dominicans of Haitian descent in the Dominican Republic. Uh, we organized it together. We thought that the photo exhibit would be a nice way of getting the message across for people here to be in solidarity with the movement. So here we are. Now, uh, before I proceed, I have to thank our a few people and then our sponsors. I have to thank June Grant uh, for being such an amazing person to work with. Gracias, June. De verdad que ha sido un placer trabajar contigo siempre. Um, thank you so much, uh, Eli Mayer. I don't know if it's here, but he nothing happens in Latin American studies that Eli doesn't touch and makes magical things with. Gracias, Eli. Thank you, Lidiana Soto, por allá. She's kind of hiding. <laughs> Gracias, Lidiana. Thank you so much. So much happens here because of the work you do as well. Um, thank you, Ed and Lainey, for being such amazing collaborators. Uh, I'll introduce them in a little bit. But thank you so much for being such amazing collaborators. And thank you so much, uh, Juan, uh, for being with us, too. De verdad que sí. Gracias, Juan, por venir de la República Dominicana en un viaje de casi 24 horas. 
<laughs> para estar con nosotros. It was like 24 hours for Juan Telemin to be with us today. <laughs> like a very long flight. Um, and I also want to thank Ana Lara, who couldn't be here, but is actually preparing a little welcoming for Juan Telemin and Perla Alvarez in our home. So um, Ana Lara is a professor of anthropology and has been really supportive of this visit. Gracias, Ana Lara, por apoyar la visita. Es quien está cocinando para nuestros invitados. <laughs> Gracias. Ahora, our sponsors who must be mentioned are, and it's a long list. I've been really happy to see like how many people have supported this. Of course, the Academic Support Grant from the Jordan Smith Museum of Art on campus, the Office of Equity and Inclusion, the Coalition Against Environmental Racism, the Women of Color Project at the Center for the Study of Women in Society, the Center for Latino and Latin American Studies, the Global Studies Institute, the Office for International Affairs, the Wayne Moore Center, the Departments of Anthropology, Ethnic Studies, International Studies, and Romance Languages, the um, Student Government, ASUO, and uh, Community Consulting, a firm in, in town. Así que, como ustedes pueden ver, esto no es un evento que ha surgido de, la, de patrocinio de por lo menos 10 instituciones diferentes. Así que, nada sucede sin comunidad. Thank you so much for having the community to be able to make this project happen. So, without any further ado, I want to introduce Elena Casio. Um, she's the Director of Civic and Community Engagement for, from the Division of Equity and Inclusion at University of Oregon. Prior to coming to the University of Oregon, Elaine lived in, this, in, in Santiago, Dominican Republic where she worked in international education and development for over 13 years. And she'd like to share a few words with us tonight. And actually, before I forget, I was going to forget, I have to excuse Alvaro Botero, who was going to be a panelist with us tonight. <laughs> I knew I was forgetting something. Um, Alvaro Botero, se supone que iba a estar aquí con nosotros hoy, tengo que excusarlo. Um, he was delayed in his travel and just couldn't make it. He got stuck in Denver. So, in cierta manera, se quedó un poco en, de, se quedó en Denver, no por su intención, sino por problemas con su vuelo. Álvaro Botero es un abogado de Organization of American States, la Organización de Estados Americanos, y que está trabajando con derechos, de temas de, derechos humanos en República Dominicana y en otros lugares en Latinoamérica, y conoce muy bien este tema. Así que él me dijo que cualquier persona que quiera hablar con él, tengo su información de contacto. Álvaro Botero es un lawyer with the Organization of American States. He's been working on these issues for a long time. So if people want to talk with him or anything, I have his contact info. And he's just really sad to not be with us here today. But Elaine, thank you so much for being here and for giving us a welcome to University of Oregon. <laughs> There's this a lip over there. Good evening, everybody. Um, on behalf of Vice President Alex Asenso and the Division of Equity and Inclusion, um, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you tonight. Um, as Professor Santos Reyes said, uh, this is really, for me, a very uh, personal visit of sorts. Having lived in the Dominican Republic for 13 years, my family is somewhere back there. Uh, we have a multicultural family. Um, and so um, I'm very excited to have uh, this here at the University of Oregon. Coincidentally, the day I left the Dominican Republic, uh, September 28th, 2013, to come to the University of Oregon uh, was also just a full day after the official ruling uh, that stripped many uh, Haitian descendants um, of their citizenship um, and thousands becoming stateless um, literally overnight. Uh, while the rest of the world really at that time really came into action um, and were dumbfounded by, by the court ruling, those who followed it closely, many of my colleagues, um, unfortunately we were not surprised. Uh, within the Dominican Constitution, there is a clause of, um, of providing citizenship for those born in the Dominican Republic except when one is quote unquote in transit. So this in transit became uh, kind of defined with the mass immigration of Haitian braceros, which was um, a, a, a coordinated effort between the two countries from 1929. So literally overnight from uh, those born in the Dominican Republic from 1929 on um, became stateless. Uh, many dubbed the in transit clause really as a, as a Haitian clause and something that was against human rights. Um, and the issue that further complicated was the country's definition of citizenship. Uh, the Dominican Republic uh, defined citizenship by country of birth, whereas Haiti defined it by bloodline. Um, catapult this with years and years of undocumented citizens, and it was really um, a culmination of a perfect storm. 
So tonight, we are really privileged uh, to hear from the different perspectives. And I do want to say that this is such a complex issue, um, but one that is not really of the Dominican Republic, this little Caribbean island off to the south. Um, I think we, and you know, the, the big audience here, we realize that we do live in a globally and interdependent world. And so there are many intersections with what we're seeing now in the Caribbean, um, and our speakers will, see, will show and demonstrate what we're seeing here currently in, in the United States. And so the issues of identity, um, constructed identity markers, human rights, citizenship, violence, these are all pervasive. And we must keep in mind that uh, we all play a role in, 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 and at the same time understand the nuances with this. Um, and also I would want to say too that after uh, the great panelists that we have here, um, it's always great to hear information, to take it in, but there's also many ways of, um, of being active and putting things into action. And so I think we have one here from from um, Reconocido, but various things that we can do from the University of Oregon to be involved in many of these initiatives. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Elaine, for that. Um, now I want to introduce uh, my colleague, Lainey Millar, a professor of Romance Languages on campus. And I have to say, I have to count with her now as a collaborator. I'm really happy that you're here, really, really happy. And Lainey is going to introduce our first speaker, Juan Telemín. And then um, later on, we're going to be hearing from Perla Alvarez from ASU. Muchas gracias, Alayi. Gracias a todos por estar aquí. Um, thanks so much, everybody, and thanks so much to Alayi and to Ed and to Juan and to June and all of the um, collaborators who have made this event possible. Um, so just a little note about how we're going to proceed. Um, I'm going to introduce Juan Telemin, and then he's going to speak to us a little bit about the history of the issue um, that gave rise to this event, and a little bit about um, the organization Reconocido. Um, for those who haven't been up to see the, the exhibit, we'll hear a little bit more about the organization, but just to mention um, Reconocido, um, el nombre de la organización, the name of the organization um, that can be translated as either documented or acknowledged or recognized in English. Así que, um, so, um, Juan Telemín, uh, nuestro invitado hoy, es director de comunicaciones de reconocido de la organización eh, y una persona que tiene mucha experiencia con la organización comunitaria eh, y con el activismo. Um, Juan Telemín, our guest um, this evening, is director of communications for Reconocido and um, somebody who has a long history of community organization and social activism. So, um, muchísimas gracias a Juan por estar con nosotros esta noche. Thanks so much to Juan for being with us, and um, we'll proceed with this part. The second part, um, uh, we're going to introduce um, per Perla, our second panelist. Unfortunately, as Alaí said, our third panelist, Álvaro Botero, couldn't be here with us tonight, and then we'll have a Q&A afterwards, so um, please prepare your questions. We'll, we're really excited to hear from the audience. Muchas gracias. Eh, buenas, buenas tardes. Yo quisiera, antes de iniciar esta locución, dar gracias a, a todos los que organizaron este evento y pudieron invitarnos para poder explicar, hablar un poco de la situación que padecen dominicanos y dominicanas de ascendencia haitiana. So, um uh, I'd like to thank um, all of the organizers of this event um, for being here um, to listen to a little bit about the situation of Dominicans of Haitian descent. Eh, y en la persona eh, de Alaí, a todos las, a todas las demás que de hecho hicieron un trabajo formidable, <laughs> que he visto un poco en el museo la exhibición y es, es bellísimo, es bellísimo lo que se ha hecho, así que lo agradezco en nombre de Reconocido. 
Um, so thanks especially to Alai and the other collaborators. And um, I've had the chance to see a little bit of the exhibition, which is just beautiful um, on behalf of Reconocido. Bien. Para iniciar esta breve alocución y hablar sobre los dominicanos de origen haitiano nacidos en la República Dominicana, necesariamente habrá que comenzar por entender el concepto de nacionalidad a partir del análisis del contexto del texto constitucional vigente hasta el 26 de enero del año 2010. So to be begin this brief talk about Dominicans of Haitian origin born in the Dominican Republic, we necessarily have to begin by understanding the concept of nationality through an analysis of the text of the Constitution in place until the 26th of January of 2010. Luego algunas decisiones del Estado en aras de regular el acceso a la nacionalidad So um, after several decisions by the state in favor of regulating access to nationality. De ahí que entremos en contexto que nos permite entender la realidad que viven los descendientes de inmigrantes haitianos en la República Dominicana. So from this context, um, let's begin to understand the reality the descendants of Haitian immigrants are living in Dominican Republic. Bien. El artículo 11 de la Constitución Dominicana vigente hasta el 2010 establecía So Article 11 of the Constitution in effect and, um, until 2010 established that Son dominicanos o dominicanas todas las personas que nacieren en territorio de la República Dominicana Dominicans are all people who were born in the territory of the Dominican Republic con excepción de los hijos legítimos de extranjeros residentes en el país en representación diplomática o los que estén de tránsito en él. Except for those legitimate children of foreigners residing in the country for diplomatic representation or who are in transit. Las leyes en materia de migración vigente hasta el 2000, agosto del 2010 limitaba la condición de tránsito a un periodo de 10 días máximo pasado los cuales la persona ya no era transeúnte. So the laws governing migration in place until August of 2010 limited the condition of transit to a maximum of 10 days, beyond which the person was no longer considered in transit. Bajo ese criterio, el Estado Dominicano reconoció por décadas la nacionalidad dominicana a todos los hijos de inmigrantes haitianos nacidos en el territorio nacional. So this was the criteria under which for decades the Dominican state recognized Dominican nationality for all children of Haitian citizens born in Dominican Republic. Aquello cambia cuando en el año 2004 se modifica la ley de migración y se amplía el concepto de transitoriedad a todo inmigrante cuyo ingreso y o permanencia en el país haya sido de manera irregular sin importar el tiempo de estadía. So this all changed in 2004 when the migratory law was modified and the concept of transitory was expanded to include all immigrants whose entry and or stay in the country has been, quote, irregular, no matter the amount of time that they had been there. Lógicamente, esta nueva legislación afectaría el acceso a la nacionalidad dominicana a todos los que nacieren en, los, en lo adelante, y que sus padres residieran de modo irregular en la República Dominicana. Um, logically, following this change, the new legislation would affect access to Dominican citizenship for whoever was born in the future whose parents were irregular residents in um, Dominican Republic. Partiendo de esta ley, la Junta Central Electoral, que es quien tiene a su cargo la custodia de los documentos de identidad de los ciudadanos dominicanos, emite en el año 2007 una circular y posteriormente una resolución a las oficialías del Estado Civil. De, okay. Bien. Dependencia de la, junta, de la Junta. So based on this law, the Central Elections Commission, which is the organization in charge of, the, of all of identification documents of Dominican citizens, sent out in 2007 a notice and afterwards a resolution to all civil bureaus which are the local branches of the commission. 
ordenándolas a no emitir copia de ninguna documentación a hijos de padres haitianos, ordering them not to grant any documentation to children of Haitian parents. El alegato fue el que en el pasado se habrían recibido declaraciones de nacimiento de hijos de padres en condición irregular que no contaban con la documentación debida para dicha declaración. The allegation justifying this change was that in the past they had received birth certificates from the parents of children in irregular situations and that these birth certificates did not count as the necessary documentation for the new declaration. A partir de, esta, de, de ese momento, decenas de dominicanos por primera vez eran cuestionados por sus orígenes. So from this moment, dozens of Dominicans for the first time had their national origins questioned. Ya no podían continuar ejerciendo su vida civil y el derecho ciudadano con normalidad. They could not continue to exercise the rights they had as citizens as they were accustomed. Ya no po perdón. Esta decisión del organismo del Estado frustró sueños de quienes habían terminado sus estudios o sus carreras universitarias y necesitaban ejercer su profesión. So this affected, this decision from the state frustrated dreams of people who had finished college and when we wanted to begin their professional lives. De quienes terminaron la secundaria y querían ingresar a la universidad. Those who had finished high school and wanted to enroll in college. Quienes cumplían la mayoría de edad y querían portar el documento de identidad para trabajar. Those who were no longer minors and wanted to carry their state IDs in order to work a quienes le nacían hijos y querían declarar su nacimiento por ante la oficialía del Estado Civil. Those who had had children and wanted to declare their births before civil officials. Casarse. To get married. Trans transitar libremente. Travel freely. Prospectos del béisbol que no pudieron firmar contratos millonarios, etc. And prospective baseball players who now could not sign million dollar contracts. Esto dio como resultado el surgimiento de varios frentes de luchas. So this resulted in the emergence of various different fronts to fight the decision. Entre los que se, se ha de, destacado, reconocido. Among these, reconocido stands out. Que inició como una campaña para informar y sensibilizar a la población en torno a lo que estaba pasando. It began as a campaign to inform and make the population aware of what was happening. Luego se convirtió en un movimiento de masa que articula a más de 2,000 personas dominicanas de ascendencia haitiana afectadas por, por las arbitrariedades del Estado. It later became a mass movement that brought together more than 2,000 Dominicans of Haitian descent affected by the arbitrary actions of the state. Indiscutiblemente, sus acciones contundentes y sistemáticas se convirtieron en un reto para las autoridades logrando posicionar y mantener en la agenda de discusión nacional un tema al que nadie quería hacer referencia. So indisputably, their forceful and systematic action, actions challenged the authorities, managing to keep as part of the national conversation a topic that nobody wanted to discuss. Esta osadía de los rechazados sociales venidos de los lugares más escónditos del país The temerity of those rejected by their society who come from the most remote parts of the country. Pobres y con poca educación, residentes en los suburbios y olvidados por el sistema. Poor, with little education, residents of the urban outskirts, forgotten by the system. Convirtió a reconocido en la representación más legítima de los descendientes de migrantes haitianos. Como dijera el reverendo Mario Serrano, sacerdote jesuita. They've turned reconocido into the most legitimate representation of descendants of Haitian migrants, as the revered Mario Serrano, a Jesuit priest, has remarked. En el año 2010 se modifica la Constitución Dominicana y, como habría de esperarse, el artículo 11 que se refiere a la nacionalidad. In 2010, the Dominican Constitution was modified, 
and with it, as was expected, Article 11, the article that refers to citizenship. La nueva constitución establece en su artículo 18. The new constitution establishes in Article 18. Son dominicanos y dominicanas, uno, los hijos e hijas de madre o padre dominicano. Dominican citizens are, one, the sons and daughters of a Dominican mother or father. Dos, quienes gocen de la nacionalidad dominicana antes de la entrada en vigencia de esta constitución. constitución. Two, those who had Dominican citizenship before this constitution took effect. Tres, las personas nacidas en territorio nacional, con excepción de los hijos e hijas de extranjeros, miembros de delegaciones diplomáticas y consulares. Three, those born in Dominican territory except the sons and daughters of foreign diplomats and consulates. Y de extranjeros que se hallen en tránsito o residan ilegalmente en el territorio dominicano. Or foreigners in transit or who reside illegally in Dominican territory. Se considera persona en tránsito a, todo extra, a toda extranjera o extranjero definido como tal en las leyes dominicanas. Persons in transit are defined as any foreigner identified as foreigner according to Dominican law. Esta nueva versión de la Carta Magna intenta salvar tanto a la Ley 28504 sobre migración y las disposiciones de la Junta Central Electoral de sus violaciones y formalizando el criterio que habían adoptado, eh, que habían adoptado en franco desafío a lo establecido por la ley sustantiva. This new version of the Magna Carta tries to save law 28504 regarding migration and the dispositions of the Central Electoral Commission from their violations and formalizes the criteria they had adopted previously in clear violation of what the law had said. En el año 2013, el Tribunal Constitucional evacuó la sentencia TC 168-13. En 2013, the Constitutional Court overturned the judicial decision identified as TC 168-13. Aplicando la Constitución del 2010 a personas que nacieron desde 1929. So they applied the 2010 Constitution to all people born since 1929. Es decir, de manera retroactiva. That is to say, retroactively. Con esta acción de la Alta Corte, no solo se desconoció el derecho a la nacionalidad de cuatro generaciones, sino que se generó una ligera confusión en, en relación al inmigrante haitiano, a los hijos de inmigrantes que contaban con documentación, y los hijos de inmigrantes que no tenían documentación. So with this Supreme Court decision, not only were the citizenship rights of four generations taken away, but the court also produced confusion as to Haitian immigrants, the children of, of immigrants who had documentation, and those who had no documentation. De ese modo se logró dividir a la población dominicana en, de un lado, pro-haitianos, quienes consideran injusto desconocer la nacionalidad de ciudadanos dominicanos, y por otro lado, los anti-haitianos, quienes entienden que no son dominicanos porque la Corte lo había decidido así y mandó a regularizarlos como migrantes. In this way, the Court divided the Dominican population into, on one side, pro-Haitian groups who considered it an injustice to strip citizenship from Dominican citizens, and on the other side, anti-Haitian groups who agree that those stripped of citizenship are not Dominicans just because the court says so and wants to reclassify them as migrants. El discurso de los nacionalistas, entre comillas, o anti-Haitianos, fue tomando un tono agresivo y poco objetivo. The discourse of the, uh, in between quotes, nationalists or the anti-Haitian groups began to take an aggressive and prejudicial tone. Ya no se defendía el derecho según lo establecieran las leyes, sino que se aludían a conflictos del pasado que habían surgido entre República Dominicana y Haití. They were no longer defending rights according to what the law had established, 
but rather alluding to past conflicts between Dominican Republic and Haiti. En el año 2014, el gobierno se abocó a buscar una salida humanitaria a la situación creada por la decisión del Tribunal Constitucional. In 2014, the government vowed to find a humanitarian solution to the situation that the TC decision had created. Y mediante una consulta y posterior consenso con el liderazgo nacional, se aprobó la ley 169-14 que crea un régimen especial y de naturalización. By consulting and reaching consensus with national political leadership, law 169-14 was passed, which creates a special naturalization process. Con esta iniciativa se restituye la nacionalidad a quienes ya poseían documentos de obtención no fraudulenta y se somete a un proceso de regularización y posteriormente naturalización a los que, aunque nacieron en el país, nunca habían tenido documentos. So with this process, citizenship would be restored to those who already possess um, identification documents that are, quote, not fraudulent and those who, although born in the country, don't yet have the documents. Es importante resaltar que eso fue solo teoría. So it's very important to point out that this was just in theory. Paralelamente a estos debates que se desarrollan entre los pudientes y tomadores de decisiones, a quienes el tiempo y el destino les otorgó la virtud de pensar y el don del raciocinio, Existe una razón latente que exige de parte del afectado y del mismo migrante mayor atención en lo inmediato. Parallel, lidiar con la pobreza. Sí, perdón. Parallel to these debates between the powerful and the political decision makers, to those whom time and fortune gave the virtue of thought and the gift of reason, there is a latent reality that demands from those affected and from migrants more attention in the short term, the struggle with poverty. Si bien, es, si bien este es un mal generalizado que afecta a la mayor parte del pueblo dominicano, es igual de cierto que los más vulnerables son aquellos, los hijos de inmigrantes haitianos pobres. Although this is, of course, a situation that affects a majority of Dominicans, it's also true that the most vulnerable are those children of poor Haitian migrants. Entre los dominicanos pobres, Los, de, los dominicanos de origen haitiano son los más pobres. Es decir, la gente que vive arrabalizada en la indigencia. Among impoverished Dominicans, those of Haitian origin have the least, which is to say, people who live in slums and in absolute poverty. Se explica fácil. La falta del documento o el impedimento de acceder a ellos limita al afectado al entorno empobrecido y olvidado que le vio nacer, crecer y es casi seguro que lo verá morir. Entre las consecuencias... The explanation is easy. The lack of documents and impediments to obtain them limits those affected to the impoverished and forgotten surroundings in which they were born, in which they've grown up, and certainly in which they'll die. Entre las consecuencias, no acceso a la educación superior, no inserción en el mercado laboral formal, no seguro de salud, no, ser, no seguridad jurídica ni ciudadana, víctimas de atropellos, entre otros. Among the consequences, no access to higher education, no room for them in the formal labor market, no health insurance, no legal rights to due process, victims of abuse, among other consequences. Y eso es sin tomar en, cu en cuenta el contexto actual que se vive en República Dominicana, donde por ser o parecer de origen haitiano, sufres discriminación e improperios, mientras que se promueve un sentimiento de odio en la población contra el haitiano y sus descendientes. And this is all without taking into account the current cultural climate in, in Dominican Republic, where being or appearing of Haitian, or Haitian origin, you suffer discrimination and insults, a feeling of hate against Haitians and their descendants grows. Falta de oportunidades. Lack of opportunity. A aquellos no llegan los planes del gobierno ni los programas de solidaridad. 
and government plans and solidarity programs never reach the people. Atropellos por parte de autoridades públicas, en fin. While the abuses by civil authorities continue. El compromiso de reconocido es crear conciencia en la población a la vez que trabaja arduamente para lograr la integración plena de los descendientes de, inmigra de migrantes a la sociedad. Reconocido's commitment is to raise consciousness among the people and to simultaneously work hard for the full integration of descendants of migrants into society. Contribuyendo a la construcción de un estado y un país libre de discriminación racial impune. Contributing to the, to the construction of a state and a country free of unpunished racial discrimination. Una sociedad respetuosa de la diversidad, armónica e intercultural. A harmonious and intercultural society that respects diversity. El movimiento ha de estar, como ha sido su principio, del lado del más débil. The mo movement has to be, as its beginnings have been, on the side of the least privileged. Luchando por la igualdad entre los habitantes de la República Dominicana. Integrando en su agenda de acciones el sentir y las necesidades de todos los dominicanos y dominicanas, en especial de origen haitiano. Fighting for equality among the inhabitants of Dominican Republic, integrating into their actions the needs and feelings of all Dominicans, especially those of Haitian origin. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Juan y Lainey, por su amazing work, por su trabajo tan increíble. Eh, ahora voy a presentarles formalmente, aunque ya lo conocieron, <laughs> a Ed Wolf, profesor de música y de la universidad y coordinador del Afro and Indigenous Peoples Research Action Group del Centro Latin de Estudios Latinos y Latinoamericanos en la Universidad de Oregon. So now I'm officially introducing to you Ed Wolf, Professor of Music and Coordinator of the Afro and Indigenous Peoples Research Action Group of the Center for Latino Latin American Studies at the University. And this is the group that kind of brought us together. So thank you, Ed, for inviting us to partake. Uh, este fue el grupo, este grupo, el grupo de Research Action Group del Centro de Latino Latin American Studies fue quien nos juntó a nosotros para hacer este proyecto. Así que gracias, Ed, por eso. Ed también proveyó mucha <laughs> asistencia técnica para la, ustedes no saben <laughs> lo que es enviar cámaras a Washington DC para que llegaran después a Santo Domingo. So we sent cameras by mail from here to Washington DC, then they go to Santo Domingo. Then las personas tomaron las fotos, ¿verdad? el grupo tomó las fotos. Then we had to print, then we had to make it beautiful. Después hubo que imprimir las fotos, hacer que se viera todo muy bonito. Y Ed fue muy importante en ese proceso. Ed was really crucial for that process of making everything come out really beautifully but also thinking about the ethical concerns of the exhibit. Y gracias, Ed, porque siempre estábamos preocupadas por el contenido ético, lo de lo que estábamos haciendo y cómo estábamos haciendo el trabajo. Así que les dejo con Ed. I'll leave you with Ed to introduce Perla Álvarez. Bueno, siendo músico, déjame aumentar el coro de voces aquí, dando las gracias a todos los que han venido y han podido participar, y especialmente a Juan, que ha viajado aquí, y por supuesto a mis colaboradores. Being a musician, let me add to the choir of thank yous, uh, the chorus of thank yous that there is out there today. Um, thanking, of course, Juan for his trip and my collaborators for uh, being able to do such a great project, and of course, June in the back there, and doing a wonderful job here at the museum. It's my great pleasure to be able to introduce to you Perla Alvarez, who is the multicultural uh, advocate for the ASUO, your own student government, for those of you out there. She also is a community organizer for the Oregon, uh, who works with the Oregon Students of Color Coalition and the Oregon Student Association, uh, working for accessible and affordable education. If that's not enough, she also happens to be a sophomore majoring in ethnic studies, so there you go. Es con gran placer tengo la, pues, uh, el honor de poder presentarles Perla Álvarez, mm, eh, apoyadora así multicultural de la organización del gobierno aquí de, esto, de estudiantes. Por supuesto también 
es un activista dentro de la comunidad, trabajando con la organización, la coalización de estudiantes de color de Oregón y también la asociación de estudiantes de Oregón, para, peleando por, en, en la lucha de conseguir una educación accesible y alcanzable uh, para ellos. También cuando tienen tiempo, están su segundo año aquí eh, sacando su título en estudios étnicos. Con ustedes, Perla Álvarez, ladies and gentlemen. Perla Álvarez. Hi everyone. Thank Saludos you. a todos. Gracias. Thank you for being here and thank you to Professora Reyes Santos for allowing me the opportunity to share with you a lot of the work that is happening in Oregon and in the United States. Gracias a todos por estar aquí. Gracias a la Profesora Reyes Santos por darme la oportunidad de compartir <laughs> el trabajo que hacemos el estado, en el estado de Oregon y los Estados Unidos. And I also want to thank Juan for um, spending time with me this afternoon and sharing with me um, all of the, some of the history of the Dominican Republic and all the struggles that they have to face because they made me realize um, that I am privileged compared to what is happening in the DR. Gracias a Juan también por estar aquí esta tarde con nosotros hablando sobre eh, su experiencia, la historia de la República Dominicana, sus experiencias allá en la República Dominicana, porque me han hecho sentir también que soy en cierta manera privilegiada uh, aún en las circunstancias que encontramos aquí en el estado de Oregon. Um, so today I will be talking about um, undocumented youth and the the different um, organizing work that is happening um, for the advocacy of this group of people. Hoy estaré hablando sobre juventud indocumentada y los distintos tipos de organizaciones de activismo que está sucediendo para lidiar con las situaciones que ellos enfrentan. But first, a disclaimer. I am not an expert in this issue, and I am talking for, from my heart and from my experience having working with this community. Pero primero debo decir que no soy experta en este tema, sino que estoy hablando desde mi corazón y desde mis experiencias trabajando con esta comunidad. I also have family members who are undocumented and people who I love, like my friends, and I've worked alongside amazing undocumented young people. También tengo familia que es indocumentada, amigos que son indocumentados, y he trabajado con gente fabulosa, joven, que están indocumentados en este país. And I am sure that there's a lot of people who know a lot more about this issue. Estoy segura de que hay mucha más gente que sabe mucho más sobre este tema. Okay, so we know that there's people who are in positions of power. Sabemos que hay gente que está en posiciones de poder. <laughs> and they make decisions for a lot of us that negatively impact our communities. Y ellos toman decisiones que muchas veces impactan de manera negativa a nuestras comunidades. And they have the power to limit the access um, to driving, to attending school, to choosing the areas that we live in. Y tienen el poder de limitar el acceso a la educación, a conducir, eh, a de elegir los lugares donde podemos vivir. And the lack of access to some of these resources are, um, impact our communities in the way that we are not able to develop as healthy adults and have a prosperous life. Y el acceso limitado a estos recursos en nuestras comunidades limita un poco cómo podemos eh, desarrollarnos como adultos prósperos. Mm -hmm. sí, y en nuestras vidas. Exacto. Um, and people are responding to these decisions by the decision makers, not only around the nation, but in Oregon. There, is, there are things happening in Oregon. Y la gente está respondiendo a estas decisiones que toman, todas estas personas que toman decisiones, que está, tienen el poder de tomar decisiones, tanto en la nación, pero también en Oregon. Hay muchas cosas pasando en Oregon. For example, the DREAM Act. Who has heard about the DREAM Act? Recently? Por ejemplo, el DREAM Act. ¿Quién ha escuchado del DREAM Act? Yes. So again, I'm not an expert in the issue, but the DREAM Act um, states that qualified undocumented um, 
youth would be eligible for a six-year-long conditional path to citizenship that requires completion of a college degree or two years of military service. Oh, gracias. Okay. <laughs> Otra vez, no digo que soy experta, pero hablando del DREAM Act, eh, lo que nos dice es que de juventud indocumentada que cualifique para el programa serían elegibles para un camino hacia la ciudadanía de seis, de seis años que requiere que completen un grado uh, de una universidad, un bachillerato, o dos años de servicio militar. And the dream, the fight to pass DREAM Act has been um, a struggle because we've been fighting for a DREAM Act for a long time and it has not passed yet. La lucha por el DREAM Act ha sido larga, ha sido por muchos años, por mucha gente, y aún así no ha pasado todavía. However, in 2012, the Deferred Action for Childhood, Childhood Arrival, or DACA, passed. Aún así, en el 2012, el Deferred Action for Childhood Arrival, que es como la acción este, deferida <laughs> para las, los uh, uh, jóvenes o niños que han llegado a Estados Unidos, una traducción muy así difícil, pero ahí va, o DACA, como se conoce. <laughs> sí, eso pasó ya, esa, eso sí se convirtió en ley. And deferred action is only a temporary measure and it is not intended to and does not grant legal status to the individuals that the DREAM Act seeks to benefit. El eh, DACA, como se conoce esta política, es solamente una medida temporera y no tiene la intención ni da este estatus legal o documentado a individuos que de otra manera sí serían beneficiados por lo que por el DREAM Act. Given that only Congress can com confer the right to lawful permanent resident status or citizenship, it is essential that we continue to work towards the passage of the DREAM Act. Ya que solamente el Congreso tiene el poder de eh, dar el derecho de que las personas se conviertan en ciudadanos o eh, residentes permanentes, it is esen es esencial que se continúe trabajando para pasar o aprobar el DREAM Act. Yeah, so thanks to deferred action, a lot of young people have access to higher education, to work permits, and uh, they have the opportunity to get their license. However, this is only, so they are eligible to be in the program for only two years, I guess, um, in l lately or in like a few months ago, something passed, so they extended it to three years. Um, but the DREAM Act would enable students to actually grant, uh, get their citizenship as they deserve. Gracias a DACA, uh, muchos jóvenes han tenido acceso a educación, a permisos de trabajo, a licencia de conducir, pero es algo que solamente es, ellos pueden ser elegibles para este programa solamente por dos años. Últimamente fue extendido a tres años, pero el DREAM Act sí les permitiría tener acceso a la ciudadanía estadounidense. Yes. So those are some of the uh, national uh, things that have been going on. But now I want to share with you something more local. And as we know, education is very important for our communities, especially uh, for our communities who are in, who are low income and who are immigrants, because um, it is important that our communities become more competent. Um, <laughs> Esas son algunas de las noticias que tenemos a nivel nacional que están pasando, pero también hay cosas más locales. Por ejemplo, la educación es un tema muy importante para nuestras comunidades, especialmente para comunidades de bajos recursos, inmigrantes. Es importante que nuestras comunidades se vuelvan más competentes. Because a lot of uh, my parents and myself, we migrated to this country to look for a better life, to look for better education, to look for better resources than we had back at our country of birth. Porque muchos de nosotros, mis padres, yo, migramos a este país buscando mejores recursos, educación del país de donde vinimos. And the hope is that we can take back whatever we learn or resources back to our community so we can help our communities to become successful and also have a prosperous life. Okay. Y la esperanza es que podamos 
llevar después de la educación que recibimos estos recursos de vuelta a nuestras comunidades y que también tengan vidas prósperas. So one of the uh, fights or one of the issues that we had been fighting for a long time was the issue of tuition equity in Oregon. So una de las peleas o temas por lo que llevamos tiempo peleando es por el tema de equidad en la matrícula de la admisión de la universidad. The tuition equity allows undocumented uh, young people to pay in-state tuition. A tuition equity, o este programa de equidad en la matrícula de la universidad, le permitiría a estudiantes indocumentados pagar eh, la matrícula de estudiantes del estado, no tener que pagar la matrícula de estudiantes fuera del estado. Yes, so and in 2013, Governor Kitzhaber signed this bill, so... Now we have tuition equity. Yay. <laughs> so, ahora en 2013, el gobernador Chris Haber uh, firmó este, esta ley que sí permite equidad en la matrícula para estudiantes indocumentados. But it was, <laughs> but, but it was, <laughs> but it was a 10-year long fight. Pero fue una lucha de 10 años, muy larga. Yes. And this is only valid for two years, I believe. Esto es solamente válido por dos años. And now the, the, well, we all know that tuition is too high. It's too damn high. <laughs> Nosotros sabemos que la matrícula es muy, muy alta. <laughs> And um, a, a lot of undocumented youth do not have access to financial aid in Oregon because they don't have um, a social security number. Uh, muchos jóvenes indocumentados no tienen acceso a ayuda económica porque no tienen un número de seguro social. So we are currently fighting for um, undocumented young people to be eligible to receive the Oregon Opportunity Grant. Ahora mismo estamos luchando para que jóvenes estudiantes indocumentados puedan recibir el Oregon Opportunity Grant o ayuda económica para asistir a la universidad. And by we, I mean the organization that I work with, the Students of Color Coalition. Oh, suck! Is one of <laughs> <laughs> is a, one of the coalition members that is fighting for this issue. Uh, cuando digo nosotros, me refiero a la coalición de estudiantes de color, OSAC, uh, que es una de las organizaciones luchando por este tema. So this is called like tuition equity 2.0 because we want to change some of this stuff and we want to add some of this. Esto se llama Tuition Equity 2.0, o equidad de, ma de la matrícula, 2.0, porque estamos, queríamos añadir más cosas a lo que ya se había conseguido antes cam y cambiar algunas. Um, and then, um, so, like I said, Tuition Equity currently only allows like, uh, two, it's for like, valid for like two years, but we want to expand it to, We know like it takes a lot more than two years for young people to graduate from college. So we want to be able to expand it to five years because that's what in reality it takes for young people to graduate from college. Mm -hmm. So tuition equity, o este programa de equidad el, el, para la matrícula, solamente es válido por dos años. Lo que queremos es aumentarlo a por lo menos cinco años, que es en realidad lo que toma para la mayor parte de los estudiantes graduarse. Yes, so that was tuition equity. <laughs> um, and if we, so right now it's not a bill yet, or it, it is just a concept. Um, we will have a hearing coming up in March, and I guess if you want to attend the hearing with a lot of us, you should contact me. My email is perla, P-E-R-L-A, A, at uoregon.edu, and I'll take you <laughs> to the hearing. <laughs> um. Este, esto no es una ley todavía, es solamente un concepto, pero va a haber este, una audiencia en marzo donde vamos a hablar sobre esto con los, uh, con la, en Salem, ¿es donde va a ser? Sí, okay. en Salem. En Salem. Sí, no. <risa> y si quieren ir, pueden avisar la Perla, Perla dice que se lo lleva con, con ella <risa> y su uh, dirección de correo es perla a, a arroba uoregon.edu. Yes, so, ok, so that was tuition equity. Eso fue equidad de la matrícula. Another, uh, one of the things that, um, that kind of hurt a lot of 
communities of color and allies to undocumented people in Oregon. Oh, otro tema que afecta a muchas comunidades indocumentadas y sus aliados en Oregon was uh, the issue of uh, Measure 88. Who has heard about Measure 88? Es el tema de la medida 88. ¿Quién ha oído sobre eso? Well, Measure 88 was uh, a ballot measure that was in the November election that would grant um, undocumented people a, a driver card which stated it's which allowed them to um well to drive <laughs> um because okay you can translate that. Uh, measure 88 or la medida 88 era una medida en en el en la tarjeta en el ballot um el vola el en el volante boleta, para votar la boleta, la boleta para votar sí en la boleta de votación que permitiría a personas indocumentadas tener una tarjeta de conducir que les permitiera conducir. Um, this, uh, so back then in 2008, uh, before 2008, people who were undocumented in Oregon could obtain their license um, without having to prove that they were a citizen to this country. En hasta, el 19, en el, hasta el 2008, personas indocumentadas en el estado de Oregon podían tener una licencia de conducir sin probar que eran ciudadanos o residentes en el estado. However, after 2008, someone said, no, undocumented people cannot get their license anymore. So, um, so then after that, uh, it was very difficult for undocumented people to get their license mm -hmm. and they were they were not able to um, so i guess the the people who obtained their license in 2008 the last year you know i think license i don't know i don't have my license so are they like for 8 years or something so like the the people who got their license in 2008 it was good until like 2013 or 15 um, And and then after that they they were not able to drive anymore because of the lack of <gasps> Después del 2000, 2008, entonces ya las personas indocumentadas no podían obtener su licencia de conducir en el estado de Oregon. Los que la obtuvieron en el 2008, ya para el 2012 o 2013 se uh, se expiraba y después se quedaban sin licencia de conducir. So why is driver license an issue? Well, Turns out that in the United States, a lot of um, people are dependent in driving because we go and we have to go get like bulk. Uh, how do you say dispensa? Like your your bulk items, groceries. Your yeah, groceries. <laughs> you can't just go like walk up to like a mini store because there's not that many, especially in communities of color, where you can go get. Uh, your groceries, you have to go to like Winco or Costco and you have big families so you have to get a lot of food for like the week. So that's one example. ¿Por qué es necesario la, eh, conseguir licencia de conducir? Bueno, porque los Estados Unidos parece que necesitamos un carro para poder conseguir cosas como comida y conseguir comida mm -hmm. en, en muchas en grandes cantidades. Uno va a Winco, uno va a Costco, si uno tiene una familia grande necesita transportación para poder conseguir la comida. And also access to jobs and a lot of um, communities, especially in documented communities, live live far away from no no live well yes live far away from their workspaces because a lot of our communities live in like work in factories, f the fields and uh, places that are, are away from those low income communities, which is really sad. También es un asunto de acceso a trabajos, porque muchas veces las personas viven muy lejos de su trabajo, en las fábricas, en los campos de trabajo de agricultura, viven lejos de sus comunidades y para eso necesita también un auto para trabajar. Yes. So, long story short, it, Measure 88 did not pass and it hit hard, it hit hard in our hearts uh, because it, it means that Uh, yet again, our communities won't be able to drive. They, they have to, a lot of us, well, I guess, they're driving. <laughs> communities are driving without license, without insurance. 
and they they're at risk to get stopped and since now i guess uh, the the police are able to share information with the immigration agents they're at risk to being deported Eh, el, voy a hacer el cuento corto, eh, Measure 88 no pasó, la medida 88 no pasó y nos dio muy duro, nos dio muy duro en nuestro corazón porque nuevamente este, tenemos tanta gente que no pueden conducir o que conducen sin licencia, ¿verdad? O con el miedo de que la policía los detenga también. Y ahora que a la policía se les permite y a veces se les exige que se comuniquen con agentes migratorios, entonces conducir quiere decir que es un riesgo que pueden ser deportados también. But it was a good opportunity to build coalitions here in Oregon. So now we have a strong coalition, and we know that people do care about um, rights for people who are undocumented, which means that we are, next time we're coming with something stronger, and we will keep fighting for our communities. Pero lo que sí creamos fue una coalición muy fuerte, y sabemos que ahora vamos a trabajar con estas personas que sí les importa este, los derechos de las personas indocumentadas. And I think that's all I wanted to share with you. Um, I have a lot of other things to share. For example, there's uh, organ an organization called Oregon Dreamers who also worked on passing Measure 88. Es que creo que eso es todo lo que voy a compartir con ustedes hoy, pero hay mucho más. Por ejemplo, hay una organización que se llama Oregon Dreamers o los soñadores de Oregon, mm -hmm. que también uh, trabajaron para pasar la medida uh, 88. And there's another organization called Momentum Alliance, uh, which is an organization that works with young people who are usually pushed by, like pushed away by society. Este también es la organización, este Momentum Alliance, el Alianza Momentum, que también a trabajar con personas que están como excluidos de la sociedad. Such as undocumented young people, HIV positive, uh, transgender and transsexual people, or people who just came out of jail. And Momentum Alliance gives them leadership opportunities um, so they can develop to be leaders, social justice leaders. Momentum Alliance trabaja con jóvenes indocumentados, con la comunidad que es uh, VIH positivo, comunidades transgénero, transexuales, gente que salen de la, que han salido de la prisión y le dan oportunidades de liderazgo para que puedan, ¿verdad?, sobrellevar sus circunstancias. Yes, so if you want to learn more about this, come up to me after this panel. Si quieren aprender más sobre esto, hablen con Perla después del panel. Thank you. Gracias. Pues muchísimas gracias. Eh, ahora tenemos un poco de tiempo para preguntas eh, del público. So thanks to everybody. We have a little bit of time now for questions, if people would like to ask questions. Así que la pregunta eh, tiene que ver con el año 1929, ¿por qué es un año tan significado en la historia de la República Dominicana y por qué se escogió este año eh, para esta ley? Este, dijimos que, lo que, la, que la Constitución Dominicana, vigente hasta el año 2010, So we say eh, that the Constitution that was, rel, uh, that was in uh, action up until 1910, Establecía dos excepciones para adquirir la nacionalidad dominicana. Had two exceptions for, uh, for obtaining Dominican citizenship. Que son la condición de hijo de diplomático o de persona que, te de que esté de tránsito. Which meant that either you were diplomatic offspring or someone who was in transit. Desde la primera constitución de la República Dominicana hasta el 26 de, de junio del 1929, up until, from the beginning of the first constitution of the Dominican Republic up until, perdón, la fecha de nuevo? 26, desde la, hasta el 26 de junio. De up until the, uh, the July 26 of the 1910. La única excepción para no ser dominicano era el hecho de ser hijo de diplomático. 
So the only exception was that you had was being a, a son of a diplomat. A partir de junio de esa fecha, entonces se, se modifica la constitución y se integra, se, le, se agrega el elemento de la transitoriedad. And in that moment is when you actually have the transition and being in transit, which is the issue. Entonces, de ahí es la interpretación de la ley 28504 del del 2004 que dice que toda la persona que no esté legal en el país está de tránsito. So, so uh, that, because of that, the tran and in 2004, there was the interpretation of anyone who is in the country who happened to be illegal was also considered now in transit. Y ese concepto de transitoriedad lo reconoce la posterior modificación de la Constitución Dominicana en el año 2010. And so that's what is recognized in the new constitution in 2010. Y es por eso que entonces se aplica de manera retroactiva para hasta el año 1929. And so that is why it goes back to the year two, uh, 1929. Más preguntas, por favor. That's a good question. Um, la pregunta para hacerla, ¿por qué es que la medida 88 no pasó? Um, there, a lot of it has to do with the messaging. Mucho tiene que ver con el mensaje. Um, some, the group who was opposing the measure 88. La gente opuesta al... al a la media 88. Um, we're sending the message that we sh that our communities would actually instead of instead of being safe, they would be in unsafe, I guess. Que el mensaje que daba la gente que estaba uh, opuesta a esta medida estaban diciendo que si pasaba y la, nuestras comunidades iban a ser inseguras, más inseguras. Mm -hmm. Because the, the I guess the official title of Measure 88 or how the organization uh, named it, named the issue was Save Roads. Entonces, porque en la manera que se eh, tituló esta medida fue para eh, para caminos uh, salvos. So it was a lot of a lot of messaging Seguros. was a lot of the messaging was based on on fear. Um, they were sending. I guess they were sending this message, and. Entonces muchos de las medidas, o sea, muchos de los mensajes estaban basados en el miedo. Um. That's one of the reasons that I can think of, but like I said, there's a lot of people who are who worked in in Measure 88. Like I see Jen Yeras back there. <laughs> Jen Yeras, say hi. She can also explain some of the reasons. Um, so if you come up to to her, she will explain a little bit more. Entonces, son <laughs> una de las razones no más, pero hay otras personas presentes como la Jen Sera y atrás que está más que eh, disponible para poder hablar más sobre el tema. Sí, por favor. So the question is about um, what's the motivation for the 2010 change um, to strip Dominicans um, and Haitian migrants of citizenship? Is it an economic motivation? Is there are there other kinds of motivations? Bien. Bueno, lo primero es eh, que no se trata de un tema de ciudadanía. First of all, it's not just it's not really a matter of citizenship. Lo que le han retirado a las personas eh, que de las que estamos hablando es la nacionalidad. What we've taken away from uh, these people is nationality. Son, nacional, nacional, son nacionales dominicanos, nacidos en territorio dominicano, con la única particularidad de que son descendientes de migrantes haitianos como son otros de descendientes chinos, o descendientes franceses o puertorriqueños o cualquier otra nacionalidad. Yeah, so we've taken away the naturalness of the nationality, if you will, of the, and uh, 
it's just that for these people who are of Haitian descent, just as they could be of any other descent of uh, and be natural born citizens. Ahora, de la, desde la percepción de ellos, ellos lo que, eh, la explicación es, se basa eh, justamente en lo que hemos dicho sobre el cambio constitucional. O sea, se modifica la constitución para limitar, evitar de que los hijos de inmigrantes que fueran a nacer pudieran ser dominicanos. Well, so they base themselves on this constitutional change and particularly so that the, the children of these immigrants could not be citizens. Sin embargo, erróneamente y de manera atropellante se ha aplicado de manera retroactiva a cuatro generaciones para atrás. But with, unfortunately, it's been applied to four generations retroactively. Bueno, esa es básicamente eh, el, 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 la, la motivación. Simplemente no queremos que sean dominicanos los que nazcan de ahí en lo adelante, pero este, lo que vamos a hacer es que vamos a crear una ley y esta ley no opera solamente para el futuro, sino que tiene que volver hacia atrás. Eh, de verdad que no tiene una lógica, por más que se le busque, no, no tiene lógica. The truth of the matter is it doesn't have a logic to the situation. We, what we know is that they do not want children in the future to be, the children of these immigrants to, in the future to be citizens, and they have to apply the same logic to the past.